looking at page 54, and we're going to go ahead and keep reading and fill out the main idea and supporting details chart. Are we looking at every single paragraph and coming up with main idea and supporting details class? No. No, but we're looking yeah. at a lot of them. So when you're summarizing, basically what we're doing today is we are summarizing. When you are summarizing, are you going to write something about every single little detail in what you're reading? Colin? No. No. It's too much. If you literally summarize every single sentence or every single paragraph in your uh, book that you're reading, once we get to reading logs where you have to write a summary, would you basically ever be finished with your reading log? No. So when we go through and we summarize, we're basically doing this, just in paragraph form. We're stating the main idea and maybe one or two supporting details of different pieces of the story. Not the whole thing, just pieces. Pieces that we find the most interesting or the most important. If we don't really find something in a story interesting, we're probably not going to summarize it. We're not really going to mention it. But if we find it interesting or supporting, or I'm sorry, important, then we will. So as we're reading, we're just summarizing pieces. The pieces that I find most interesting because I've already created the answers. So let's go ahead and on page 54, please read Zadie. And read loud and slow. You may think you're reading so slow it's like a robot, but you know what? That's better than going too fast. Not far from here. Pull your mask all the way down below your chin so it doesn't, because even then it goes up a little bit and it muffles. Not far from here. Saguaro. Saguaro, good try. Saguaro, you see. A very different kind of desert home. Jammed between a dead cactus and a fallen tree is a, is a huge mound of tangled twigs. It's the nest of a wood rat. So that paragraph is really kind of short. So should we summarize that really short paragraph that doesn't quite say much? Zari? No. No. Okay? So we're not going to main idea and supporting detail it. Zadie, keep reading. Loud and slow. Wood rats are also called pack rats. They use anything they can find to build enormous nests. A wood rat, rat's nest might be made of sticks, rocks, leaves, cactus spines, or even bones. It may be as tall as a person and just as wide. The nest protects the wood rat from, from foxes, ox, and other predators. It is also a cool place to hide from the hot sun. So we had a lot of information in that paragraph. And it was some interesting information, especially the part about bone, I think. So should we summarize that one, class? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So... Let's look at that very first sentence. Wood rats are also called pack rats. Is that a good main idea sentence for this paragraph? Think about it. Before you raise your hand to answer, think about it. Is that a good main idea sentence for that paragraph? Once you think you have an answer, raise your hand. Carla? Yes? Well, think about it. Is the whole paragraph just about what they're called? Yes. Is it? Is the whole paragraph talking about why they're named or their name? Is the whole paragraph talking about their name? No. No. So is that a good main idea? No, ma'am. No. Let's look at the second paragraph. They use anything they can find 
to build enormous nests. Is that a good main idea sentence? Think about it before you raise your hand. Even if you think you have an answer, think about it for a little bit longer. Look at the rest of the paragraph. Is that all about that sentence? Using anything they can find to build enormous nests. Victoria? Is that a good, that second sentence, is that a good main idea sentence? You're on the right track, but then I'm not really sure where that second part came from. Victoria said yes, but you'd have to break it down. What do you mean by that? Well, I know, but that second sentence, they use anything they can find to build enormous nests. Is that a good main idea sentence? I think you might have been looking at the wrong thing. Aaron? Yeah. Hmm? Okay, now I think you guys are just guessing. Look. Yes, it is a good one because the third sentence says a wood rat's nest might be made of sticks, rocks, leaves, cactus, vines, or even bones. That supports they use anything they can find to build their nests. Then the next sentence says it may be as tall as a person and just as wide. Well, that supports that they build enormous nests because enormous is a synonym for big. Remember, synonyms are words that mean the same thing. Then it says the nest protects the wood rat from foxes, hawks, and other predators. It is also a cool place to hide from the hot sun. That supports the fact that they build nests. So every sentence supports they use anything they can find, the nests are really big, they build the nests. So that second sentence that uh, wood rats use anything they can find to build enormous nests is a good supporting, I mean, I mean, sorry, main idea. You just have to change they to wood rats so that you know what you're talking about. Wood rats use anything they can find to build enormous nests. That first sentence, wood rats are also called pack rats, is not a great main idea because it says nothing about using what they can find and enormous or even building nests. This whole paragraph is about building nests, using anything they can find, and big nests. The fact that they are also called pack rats really says nothing about the nests. It just says, hey, this is another name for this animal. So does everybody understand why this sentence is a good main idea sentence and why the first sentence is not? The first sentence says nothing about the nests. It just says, hey, this is another name for these animals. Now, the first supporting detail that we find in this sentence is what? The first supporting detail that we find in this paragraph is what? The first one that comes along. Zari? A wood rat's nest might be made of sticks, rocks, leaves, cactus, spines, or even bones. Good. So... We're going to take out a wood rat because we know we're talking about wood rat. A nest may be made of what, Zari? Zari, what are they made of? I was talking while I was not oh. muted. Sticks. Sticks. What else? Rocks. 
Rocks. The leaves. Leaves. Cactus. Cactus spines. Cactus. Spines. What else? Or, or even bones. And we're not going to put even because we don't need to write that. Or bones. Good. There's our first supporting detail. We only really need to list two. What's the next supporting detail that comes in that paragraph? After we find out they use anything they can find, like sticks, rocks, leaves, cactus, spines, or bones, what's the next supporting detail that we see in this sentence? Smith? Oh. It may be as tall as a person, and just as wide. Good. The nest can be as tall as a person and just as wide. Very good. Okay, I'll give everybody a second to finish writing. Zadie, while everybody's finishing writing, go ahead and tell us what it says above the drawing of the wood rat. Loud and slow. A wood rat nipples on the sweet fruit of a prickly pear cat. Good. So sometimes captions, so we didn't really learn anything about what wood rats eat because the author did not feel like it fit in that paragraph. And that's okay. So sometimes when authors of um, things like this, these informational nonfiction pieces, when they have a fact that they think is interesting but it doesn't really fit anywhere in what they're writing, then they will put a cap, they will take, uh, they will use a picture of something to do with this interesting fact and then have a caption underneath it. So talking about what it's eating doesn't really fit in this paragraph about its nest. So what the author chose to do was include a picture with a caption that tells this fact that maybe they thought was interesting. If we look at the pictures, the photographs, does everybody understand the difference between a photograph and a drawing? Is a drawing a real thing? No. No, it's not. It may be a drawing of a real thing, but it's not that actual thing. A picture, a photograph, shows the real life animal thing, whatever's going on. So at the bottom, we see a picture of a wood rat, a real life wood rat. Then at the top, we see, oh, so that's what a wood rat nest looks like. So the author is talking about a wood rat nest, and she thought, hmm, it would be really helpful to include a picture of what the wood rat's nest looks like in order to um, make you understand exactly what she's talking about. Okay, go ahead and look at page 55 and read Aaron, loud and slow. Maybe desert. Louder. Many desert animals are nocturnal. A little slower. They are active only at night. When it, when it is... Remember, comma means you're not ending the sentence. You're just taking a quick breath and then continuing. So start there, active. Loud. They are active only at night when it is cooler. Nocturnal desert dwellers spend their day in burrows dens, and other sheltered places. The kangaroo rat and the kit fox are not tall. They stay underground until the sun goes down. Very good. So at the bottom, we have a picture of a what? What do we have a picture of at the bottom? Colin? We have a kitten fox. A kit fox. Why do you think the author wanted to include this picture of a kit fox? 
Why do you think the author wanted to include this picture of a kit fox? Victoria? To show what it looks like. She's talking about a kit fox and she says, hmm, maybe my readers will find it interesting to see what a kit fox looks like. Good. Okay, Erin, look at that drawing at the top and read it. Read about the drawing. Sorry, don't read the drawing. But. Elf owls are the smallest owls in the world. They are about the size of sparrows. So when we think of owls, we think of like pretty big birds. Are they all really big? Class? No. No. Because here we're talking about elf owls and they are small. They're about the size of a sparrow. A sparrow is a small bird. A sparrow is only like maybe that big. So that's how big the elf owls are. Think of an elf. When we think of elves, we think of like a small little creature that helps Santa or something. Well, so that's probably where they got the name elf owl. It's a small little owl, so they named it after a small little mythical creature, an elf. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. And Erin, you only had one paragraph, so go ahead and keep reading on page 56, loud and slow. But some desert animals are active during the day. Insects are on the move everywhere. The N is silent. Columns. 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 Louder. Columns of ants march across the ground. Colorful beetles crawl up and down the streams. Grasshoppers spring from leaf to leaf. Insect eating spiders are busy too. They spin silken webs among cactus spines. So let's look at this paragraph. We're going to summarize it. We're going to come up with the main ideas and two, I mean the main idea and two supporting details. So first, remember, when we're trying to find main idea, the first thing we look at is the first sentence. But some desert animals are active during the day. Is that a good um, main idea for this paragraph? Colin? Yes. Yes, why? Because it's talking about um, how desert animals move during the day. Very good, because the rest of the sentences in the paragraph are naming specific desert animals and what they do during the day. Very good. So we're going to take out that word but because we don't really need it here. And we're just going to say some desert animals are active during the day. Does some mean all? Class? No. 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 Does some mean none? No. no. Does some no. mean most? Yes. yes. No. No, it doesn't. Some does not mean most. Does some mean hardly any? No. 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 Some means kind of right in the middle. Not all of them, not even most of them, but not none of them, and not the least amount of them. It's kind of right in the middle. Okay. Now, let's look at the rest of those sentences. It says, columns of insects are on the move everywhere. Columns of ants march across the ground. Colorful beetles crawl up and down stems. Grasshoppers spring, a whip, spring from leaf to leaf. Those are all good supporting details. But I don't have room, and I don't have time to write each of those sentences as my supporting details. So, how could I take all four of those, I think it's four, one, two, three, four. How can I take all four of those sentences and put them together into one? Well, I'm gonna help you out. We can take all of those names and list each of those animals in one sentence and then just summarize what they do. They move. So, 
we could say ants, beetles, and grasshoppers are on the move. Ants, beetles, and grasshoppers are all examples of insects. Those are type, uh, types of insects. So we could even take out ants, beetles, and grasshoppers and just say insects are on the move. A spider is not an insect. We're going to learn about that, I think, in the next chapter of science. A spider is not an insect. So we're going to use spiders as a second supporting detail. Should I say spiders are busy too, Michaela? No, it's not quite enough detail. It's a little bit too vague. Vague means not clear. Vague means not clear. But what about the second, the sentence after? They spin silken webs among cactus vines. Would that be a better supporting detail? A more detailed and clear? Yes, but we're not gonna use every word. So we can just say, Spiders spin webs. Why do they spin those webs? Victoria? Because so they spin a web so they can get food. So they can get food. That is very true. So spiders spin webs in order to catch bugs to eat. So if insects are on the move during the day, would it be helpful for a spider to be nocturnal? Insects are awake during the day. So would it be helpful if a spider was nocturnal? Colin? Mm -hmm. No, because then if a spider is nocturnal and it's awake at night, well, then its food is sleeping in hidden places. So can it get food easily? Class? No. No. Okay, Erin, go ahead. Let's see. We see on the, the picture, on the, or, I'm sorry, the photograph on the bottom, we see an animal that is awake during the day, a lizard. How can we tell just by looking at this picture that this lizard is not nocturnal? How can we tell just by looking at the picture on the bottom of page 56 that this lizard is not nocturnal? Michaela? Because, it's out, because, it's out in the day. because we can tell this picture was taken during the day. How can you tell the picture was taken during the day, Michaela? What does it have? Sunlight. Sunlight and a... What do you see behind you or in front of you, depending on the part of the day? on the ground? A shadow. a shadow. Do you have much of a shadow at night? Not really. Unless there's a bright light or sometimes if the moon is really bright, but even then it's not much of a shadow. Good. And then at the top, we have some different insects. We see some ants. We can again tell that that's during the day because you can tell that there's sunlight. You can't really see the shadows, but that's probably because, well, the ants are small, and it might have been taken around noon where the sun is straight above you, so you don't your shadow's underneath you. Erin, tell us about this drawing at the top of page 56. Loudly and slowly. A, a painted grasshopper uses its long legs to hop from plant to plant and to escape being eaten. Good. So there's an adaptation that those grasshoppers have made. They have very long legs so that they can hop for um, long distances. Okay, thank you, Erin. Go ahead and look at page 57. And please read Carla. Read loud and slow. The sun has climbed higher and clear blue sky. Can you feel the heat? Desert lizard. Don't sing too much. Their tongues scaly no, Go skin. slow, go slow. That doesn't say tongues. What does it say? Their oh. 
Mr. Tuck. Tough, scaly, scales. Not scales. They're tough, scaly. Yes, scales. That doesn't say scales. It says they're tough, scaly. Read the whole word. Then. There you go. Seals, water inside their body and keep them from drying out. Lizard rests on rocks, hunting insects and lick. Nope, read that word again. Go clinging to cactus stems. And one small patch of desert, you could see a tiny shrink. No, nope. not shrink. Walks, tiny Red. horn. No, nope. Carla, stop, stop. Go back. You could see tiny what? Not shrinks. Chuck. No, go, Carla. Go back to the beginning of the sentence. In one small patch of desert, you could see tiny, that's an SK. How do you say SK? Skinks. Skink. Skinks. Kinks. 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 There you go. Chalky. Not chalky. Chalk. Go slow, Carla. Read the whole word. Not just the beginning and end letters, but the whole word. Kinks. Chalky. There you go. Duck walk. Go. Spin horned Fine. Lizard. Fine. And lumbery. Yellow monsters. Carla, go slow because sometimes I'm, I'm saying things. Okay, good. So at the bottom, we see a photograph of one of those lizards on top of a cactus. Look how it stands above the spines, not on them. Carla, tell us about this drawing in the top corner of page 57. Go slow. Read all the hey, whole what? word. A horned lizard spin. Not spin. What does that say? Spiny. Spiny scales are good for defense against desert predators. Good. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. And let's see. Carla, go ahead and read the first paragraph. That's that first little block of text. Suddenly something a little slower. Something straight across your path. It's a spinning lizard right on the its heels. Carla, don't skip words. You skip the word and Carla, don't skip words. You skip the word and. We can't skip words. Yes, ma'am. So start it's, it's a, a speedy, speedy lizard. lizard and right on his heels is a roadrunner. Roadrunner can fly, but these desert birds prefer to run at their lizard. And the uh, other small animals they hunt. Very good. Thank you, Carla. Go ahead and read next. Cullen. Loud and slow. Pull it all the way down so it doesn't ride up and muffle. There you go. Roadrunners have long, strong legs. Louder. Roadrunners run, have long, strong legs. They can run as fast as many lizards can. In fact, this time the bird 
is faster. The Roadrunner catch, catches the lizards by the tail and swallows it in one gulp. Good. So Roadrunners are actually better runners, even though they are a type of bird, they are better runners than they are flyers. Colin, go ahead and read. Of, we see the Roadrunner who has caught a lizard down at the bottom. Tell us about that drawing at the top, Colin. A roadrunner's feet have have two toes that point forward and two that point backwards. This shape helps the bird grab not grab grip the ground when it runs. Good. So that's why they're so good at running. The way their toes, they have two forward and two back. It helps them grip the ground so that they can stay, so that they are better, um, more steady runners. Okay, Cullen, go ahead and on page 59, read just that first block of text, the first paragraph on page 59. Nearby, a jackrabbit looks for plants to nibble. Jackrabbits are even faster than road runners. They can outrun almost everything in the desert. They can even outrun coyotes most of the time. Good. So let's look at the first sentence of that paragraph. Nearby, a jackrabbit looks for plants to nibble. Would that be a good main idea for this paragraph? Zari? No. Why? Because this is not telling us about um, what, what they like to eat. Exactly. It's an interesting fact, but the rest of the paragraph says nothing about what they like to eat. So they're just introducing it because it kind of fits there. But they're not talking anymore about what a jackrabbit likes to eat. Very good, Zari. Okay. Thank you, Cullen. Read next. Kingston, loud and slow. Pull it all the way down below your chin. Coyotes eat rabbits when they catch them. A little slower. You're doing great, but just a little slower. But they eat, but they will eat just about anything. From birds, lizards, to birds. From birds, jump to birds. From birds, and lizards, to birds. Very good. Kingston, we don't see a picture of a coyote, and we probably should have I probably should have had Cullen read the picture, but because it has more to do with the first paragraph than the second paragraph. Because that first paragraph on page 59 is about what type of animal? What type of animal is that first paragraph about? Victoria? And what is what type of animal is this second paragraph about? Zadie? Coyotes. Coyotes. But I forgot to have Cullen read the caption for the drawing. So, Kingston, will you tell us? What this drawing is showing at the top of page 59. Well, tell me about it. Desert jackrabbits have longer ears than rabbits. From other bottoms. Long ears release heat and help to get jackrabbits stay cool. Very good. So that's another adaptation that these rabbits that live in the desert have made. We see a jackrabbit has really long ears, whereas the cottontail rabbit that would live more, maybe, maybe around here, if you see a rabbit around here, it's probably a cottontail rabbit, their ears are a lot shorter because does it get as hot here in Memphis, Tennessee as it does in the desert class? No. 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 So we know the, the ears release heat, 
so that the rabbits can stay cool. So do rabbits here need to release as much heat through their ears as rabbits in the desert? Class? No. no. Yeah. So that's why these jackrabbits that live in the desert, their adaptation, what's happened over time, is that their ears have become very long so they can release more heat. Whereas rabbits here in Memphis or up north really don't need to release as much heat, so their ears are shorter. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. And loudly and slowly, Kingston, keep reading on page 60. By noon, okay. noon, even the coyotes are panting. It's well over 100 degrees. The sun is a, the sun is a fireball overhead. Nearly the daytime. Oh, noon, you skipped a word. Nearly. Nearly all the daytime. Move into shade of move into move into the shade of rocks and camp down during the hottest part of the day. Good. So this is kind of a short paragraph, but we're gonna go ahead and come up with a main idea and some supporting details. We're gonna go ahead and summarize it. Well, by noon even the coyotes are panting. Is that a good main idea sentence? By noon even the coyotes are panting. Is that a good main idea sentence? Michaela? Not really. Because this whole paragraph isn't about coyotes. What about the second sentence? It's well over 100 degrees. Is that a good main idea? All by itself, with no other information. Is that a good main idea? Zadie? No. Not quite. But if we take both of those sentences and put them together into a new sentence in our own words, we can come up with a good main idea. We know that all of this in this paragraph is happening around what part of the day? What part of the day is this whole paragraph happening? Aaron? But what part? Tell me specifically what part. Yes, it's the hottest, but what time of the day? Smith, can you help her out? Noon. Noon. What's going on at noon that is causing all of this in this paragraph to happen? Aaron, what's going on at noon that's causing all of this to happen? It's really, really hot. It's 100 degrees. So we're going to take those two sentences, put them in our own words, and combine them to come up with a new main idea. Because remember, is the main idea always written word for word in the paragraph? Class? No. no. Sometimes we have to take the information and put it together into one sentence. So we can say, at noon, it's extremely hot in the desert. me one supporting detail. One piece of information from that paragraph that tells us at noon it's extremely hot in the desert. Zari? The sun is, is the sun is a fireball overheat. Over what? Head. Overhead. Good. The sun is a fireball. What else? What's another supporting detail? So the sun is a fireball. 
What else does this sentence say that supports that at noon it's extremely hot? The answer's not here, it's not here. Victoria? details. The first one, usually when we put supporting details or we summarize, we do it in order. So the first supporting detail that we see in this sentence is that coyotes pant. Think about when you pant. Do you pant because you're cold or because you're comfortable, class? No. No. When do you pant? How do you feel when you pant? Class? Hot. Hot. So that could be the first supporting detail. The second is that it's over 100 degrees. Remember, our main idea words cannot be supporting details, but do we have that coyote's pant? Even though we used that first sentence to get this part, did we say anything about the coyotes in our main idea, Cullen? No. No, so we can say coyote's pant. Even though we took that it's really hot from the second sentence, did we say the exact temperature, Cullen? No. No. So we can use those as supporting details. However, we could not say it's really hot as a supporting detail because we already said that right here. We cannot say anything about noon as a supporting detail because we already have it in our main idea. So main idea words cannot be supporting details, okay? Does everybody understand that? So I couldn't say my main idea is that at noon it's extremely hot in the desert. I couldn't use that same sentence as a supporting detail because supporting details are different from the main idea. Okay, Kingston, we see, we see some animals probably in the process of moving into the shade or we can see that this coyote is panting. How can we tell that this coyote is panting? It's not in the shade. How else can we tell that it's panting? Michaela? It has its tongue out. It has its mouth open and its tongue out. If you look really closely, you can see its mouth is open and you can see its tongue is poking out a little bit. Can you pant with your mouth closed? <laughs> no, you can't. Maybe you can breathe fast. You can breathe with your mouth closed, yes, but you can't pant. Pant is... <sighs> and usually your tongue sticks out just a little. Not all the way, and maybe it doesn't even fully, it doesn't even really come out of your mouth, but it's not in the normal place. It's not down here, it's like this. Good. And then we can see that that scorpion, well, we can tell it's still daylight, but we can see it's a little darker, so it's shade. It's in the shade. Kingston, read to us about the drawing of the scorpion up at the top of page 60, loud and slow. Very good. Okay, thank you, Kingston, for reading. Move on to page 61. And please read Michaela. Oops. Loud and slow. Even slower than you think you need to go. If you think you're going slow enough, go a little slower. When you're reading out loud, you really can't go too slow unless you are being silly and ridiculous but you'd know if you were going too slow because you'd be being silly and ridiculous. Go ahead. Loud. Take the trip that animals find. Go slower, you're going too fast. Okay. Start again. Start again and go slower. Take a trip from the animals. Find a place out of the sun to rest. Just be careful where you sit. Scorpions often look, 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 and cave Nope, what does that say? Yes. 
That's one of that was one of our vocabulary words from yesterday. Chunk it. Read that word. C R E V. How would you say that? I mean e, e, e. If I say long e, I mean e. If I say short a, I mean a, a, a. If I say long a, I mean a. If I say short i, I mean i, i, i. Do you hear the difference between short e, e, and short i, i? Do you hear that difference? Short e is e, short i is i. Long I, focus, even if you think, oh my gosh, I know this, you don't, because you're not reading that way. Long I is I. Short O is off, off, off. Long O is O. Short U is up, up, up. Do you hear the difference between short O, off, 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 and short U, up, up, up? Long U is U. Or sometimes, ooh. So, Michaela, crook, ev, this is a short I sound, is, is, z. Crook, ev, is, is. Crev, if, sis. There you go. So start that sentence, that sentence again, slow and loud. Remember, a comma means pause, a period means stop. Two. Oh, start again. That's okay. We still have 10 minutes. Watch out for all for hidden rattlesnakes. Not hidden. Hiding rattlesnakes. There you go. And four snakes. Two there. Okay, Michaela, listen. When we come to a comma, we just make a quick pause to take a quick breath. When we come to a period, we make a longer pause to stop. So this sentence sounds like, watch out for hiding rattlesnakes and coral snakes too. Their poison is deadly. So don't, we're not putting two with the next sentence. Otherwise that makes no sense. Two, their poison is deadly. Does that make sense? No. So start again. But remember class, commas are just a quick little breath Periods are stopping points. Pay attention. You're all doing this, so just because you think I know that, you're all doing it. Keep going, Michaela. Not hidden. Go slow. You're going too fast. Cover up the ing. What word does that look like? Minus the e. Not start. Everybody. 
everybody should be paying attention. Just because Michaela is the one currently reading, you all need help with this. If I cover up ing, what word does that look like minus the e? Smith? You're going too fast. You're moving too far ahead. You guys, I'm not looking for the answer quickly. I'm looking for the answer correctly. So if I'm showing you chunking, sorry, hand down, just listen. If I'm showing you chunking, that means I only want you to tell me what you see. So now Michaela said dist. When I move to here, I just want you to say this. I don't want you to put them together yet. It's like when I say numbers, you guys are all trying to move too fast. If you try to move too fast, you're gonna miss something. So Michaela? Distance. Sometimes when you chunk it, the word will sound a little different, but it should trigger your memory. Distance. Distance, distance sounds like distance. So when you chunk it, the word may sound a little different, but it should trigger your memory that you know something that sounds kind of like that, that is a word. Distance is not a word, but it sounds a lot like distance, which is a word. Michaela, go back. Look at the drawing at the top of page 61, and Michaela, slowly. Again, some of you are trying to go too fast to, because you think it shows me you know what to do. But again, you're missing things when you're going too fast. Go slow. Michaela, read to us about that drawing at the top of page 61. Turn the page. Thank you, Michaela. Read next. Zari. Loud and slow. I don't. Reading fast does not show me that you know how to read. It just shows me that you're trying to go faster than you need to. Heat waves shimmer above the landscape. The leaves of the Miss Quet Mesquite Mesquite trees curl up. Curled leaves lose less water to the hot, dry air. Two. What does that say? Curled leaves oh, it, lose. Sorry, you were right. You were right. I was thinking I was going too fast. And instead of reading slowly and carefully, 
I read that as in instead of to. But is that the word in? No. no. So should we read the word in? No. So see, even I go too fast sometimes. So sorry, Zari, can you start that sentence again, curled leaves? Sorry. That's okay, that was me, that was my fault. The desert oh, is very quiet. Start that sentence again, curled leaves. Most of the birds are silent. They seem to be waiting for the sun. sun's fierce heat to fade. Keep going. Go, go, guard U.S. Nope. Guard U.S. Let's look at it. Sorry. Gade? Not great. There's no ing at the end, so we're not going to imagine it either. Short A. Grind. Short A, not long I. Grup. Okay, let's let's chunk it even smaller, which sometimes we have to do. Grup. A. Not A. I said short A sound. Look at what I'm uncovering. Add. Grup. Add. This is a long U. Yeah. Long U. Uh. Long U. Short U is a. Uh. Long U. Remember, all long vowel sounds say their names. So long U, U sounds like what's yeah. that? Long U sounds like its name. U U Alley. Uh. Okay. It's at the end of the word. So a Y at the end of a word sounds like P. E. So grup. Add, listen, grup, add, you, all, e. Grup, add, you, all, e. Grad, you, all, e. Gradually. What word does that sound like? Gradually. 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 Okay, so read that word again. Gradually, the sun moves lower in the sky. As shadows grow longer, the temperature starts to drop. Desert, bir desert birds begin to sing again. At sunset, coyotes call to each other, bark barking and yelping. They join voices in an e eager. Not eager. There's no G. E ear. Ear. And then those IE sounds ear. like. Ear. Eerie. Walling song. Well, oh, I'm sorry, stop. We have to read the words correctly. Eerie. Wailing song. So read that sentence again. They join voices. And uh, nope. and, and read what read what I just said. They start with they. They join voices. In an eager not ear. Eager, sorry. There's no G. Okay. Ear. Sorry, I just read that word. Were you listening? Ear, E. Ear, E. I, E makes the E sound. So what is that word? Ear, E. Eerie. Eerie, wowing song. That's not an L, that's an I. A, I together make the A sound. So that would be... 
stop. Okay, good. But Zara, you're moving too fast. Wait till I finish speaking before you start, okay? Because I'm still speaking, I'm still helping you, and then you say the word, but it's not ready, so we can't hear you. Okay, so we have to pause because you have music. Leave everything where it is if you're at school. Um, girls at home, log back on after music, and we will finish the story. We only have a little bit left, so it'll only take us like five, maybe ten minutes. Um, so just put that to the side. Yes. Okay, so we're just going to read the very end, the last page. Victoria, go ahead and read on page 63. Read loud and slow so that everybody can hear you. Okay, Victoria, when you see R-E at the beginning of the word, you know you say it how? Re. If you see R-E, like return, or reread, or redo, anytime you see R-E at the beginning of a word, you usually say it as re. And then what word is this? Retreat. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Good. So now what we're going to do, instead of finding the main idea and supporting details of one paragraph, we're going to look at the main idea and supporting details of these whole two pages. So, who thinks they can come up with the main idea for all of pages 62 and 63? Not for the whole story, just these two pages. Think for a minute. What are these two pages all about? Kingston, what are they all about? Loud. How it's going to be very good. It's going to be nighttime and what's happening? What are all the animals doing? Some of them are. So very good. The main idea of these whole last two pages is that plants and Animals react to the change in temperature as the sun goes down. Notice I capitalized the S in sun. It's because the sun is the specific name for the star that gives us light and energy. Yes, Zari, quickly. Oh, I was just putting my head. Oh, okay. Down. Okay, I get it. Okay, so now that we have the main idea, who can give me one supporting detail about how plants react to the change in temperature as the sun goes down? Who can give me one supporting detail about how the plants react to the change in temperature as the sun goes down? Zari? The, the leaves of the mess Quiet. Mesquite. Trees curl Make sure up. you say the word. After I, after I tell you how to say the word, make sure you say it. So it's mesquite. So what type of trees are they? 
Mesquite trees curl up. Very good. Why do they curl up? Because it's beginning, it's beginning to get dark. Well, why do they need to curl up? What's the purpose of curled leaves? Can somebody help her out? What's the purpose of curled leaves? Zadie? Um, to lose less water. To, yes, very good. So, our first supporting detail. Leaves curl up. So, they lose less water. Now, what's a supporting detail about how the animals react to the change in temperature as the sun goes down? We have lots of supporting details. Um, you can go ahead and just give me one. We're just going to do one. Carla? They go, they go to the place where they sleep and go to sleep. Good. So, daytime animals, so animals that are awake during the day, return to their shelter to sleep. Now, we're not going to write any more supporting details, but who can come up with another supporting detail? Ethan, can you see with, even with the tripod? Okay, Erin, can you see even with the tripod? And I think you two are the only ones who will really be affected, because Michaela, I'm not going to write anything far enough over here. And Victoria, I'm not going to do anything far enough over there. So who can come up with another supporting detail? We're not going to write it, but there's lots of supporting details in these two pages. Who can give me another one? Sorry, I see your hand, but we're going to give somebody, um, thank you for participating, but let's give somebody else, let's see if anybody else wants to participate. There's lots of supporting details because it's two whole pages of information. So we have leaves curl up so that they lose less water and daytime animals return to their shelters to sleep. Cullen, give me one more. The hot desert is... Uh, well, does that say how plants and animals react to anything? No. no. Zadie? Birds, lizards, li birds, lizards, and other daytime animals react... Uh, Zadie? Do we already have that? Yeah, so see if you can find something different. If we're looking at the whole two pages, Victoria, what were you going to say? Louder? Just like yell, basically. Okay. I know you can yell because I heard you at recess and aftercare. Okay. But I'm looking more for how animals and plants react. Um, Aaron? When the temperature drops, the birds start to sing again. Birds start to sing. Very good. They were quiet when it was hotter so that maybe they could save some energy. Zari, go ahead. What's your other one? Coyotes call to each other, barking and yelping. Good. So coyotes um, start to bark. Anything else? Smith, was that yours? Was that what you were going to say? Or not yours, but what you were going to say? Victoria, do you see something else? Well, okay. But that's kind of what Zari, what, uh, Zari just said. But okay. Okay. Well, very good. Go ahead and turn the page. And Victoria, since you had a very short little paragraph, I'm going to let you read to us about the author. So we're on page 64. And go ahead and, Victoria, read. Oh, put your face shield on so that you can, you do need it on for this. And then pull your mask below your chin and then read loud. Because I know you can yell, but it's 
a lot to yell. But read loud and slow. I just went to South Dakota for the first time this summer. Keep going. Harsh. Harsh. No, harsh. Not Paris, but harsh. Harsh. No, look. Here we have the word. Harsh. Harsh. How would you say that? That kind of looks like the word pair, just with an extra R. So how would you say pair, pair. with an extra R? Pair. No. This extra R is between the P and the A. So instead of pair, it would be prayer. prayer. Prairie. Correct. Carla, make sure you're reading along with us. So the harsh prairie, what? Harsh prairie go. Remember IE when it's together sounds like E so for EI wait I think I spelled it wrong. I did. Would you say that? Frontier. Frontier. Carla, make sure you're reading along. read that word already. Cover up the A and A, and what do you have? And then how would you say A and A? August. Everybody should be watching. Victoria is the one currently reading. But everybody needs to know these skills. So, Victoria. August and uh, there you go.
that U makes OO, the OO sound. to read Victoria but you did very well. Go ahead and put your uh, main idea and supporting detail chart in your reading folder and then you can put your reading textbook away. Yes, Erin. 